As the crisis between Ukraine and Russia continues, weather is increasingly becoming a pivotal factor in what might happen, to the point that the Biden administration now reportedly has meteorologists on staff keeping track what's going on in the region, weather-wise. If you know a little bit about the history of war in that area, you might think that these meteorologists are focused on how much snow is coming down. After all, if you close your eyes and you think about two of the biggest wars that have been fought in Russia, your mind is probably going to be drawn to the snow. There was Napoleon's invasion and subsequent burning of Moscow that ultimately ended up in disaster. As winter came, Napoleon had to retreat, and there went the French Empire. And although it is true that trying to advance in the middle of a blizzard is difficult, frozen ground itself isn't much of a problem. You can walk through it. What you can't really do, especially with equipment, is pass through mud. This is a major problem in the region. Once the frozen ground begins to thaw, it turns into a muddy soup. And even if you do have some well-paved roads, a lot of that soup will start to cross into the roads, making them very difficult to navigate. This mud not only slowed Napoleon's movements, but it was also a factor of the German invasion during World War II. Again, if you close your eyes and you think about what that invasion looked like, you probably have images of lots of white snow in your head. But once more, mud created significant logistical hurdles. We were in the era of automobiles at that point, and cars are heavy. They sink in mud. Even horses, which are much lighter than cars, were sometimes buried almost all the way up to their chests. And if you think about something like tanks, Tanks are much, much heavier than cars, and are going to sink further into the ground if they drive over that type of mud. Connecting this to contemporary Ukraine, Russia currently has soldiers stationed all the way around the border of the country. And if Russia's true intentions are to eventually invade, there is speculation that the reason that Russia has not yet done so is because of the weather. You see, under normal circumstances, that sort of mud would not be around in January due to the cold weather that you would usually have there. But this season has not been that cold. The ground has not yet solidified in a way that would be helpful to drive tanks over it. But that's about to change. The current estimates are that the peak freezing season will be in the middle of February. At that point, the ground will be cold enough to not immediately give way to the tanks, allowing Russia to quickly invade Ukraine if it so chose. There is a window of opportunity that surrounds that date. But eventually, the ground is going to warm up and the mud will thaw out, to the point where, if Russia chooses to invade in the middle to end of March, it is going to be a much slower process. That is not to say that it will be impossible, but the slower you go, the more vulnerable you are, the less likely the invasion is to succeed, and the higher costs that you'll pay to do it. Given that, you might think that the back end of March is a safer time, and as a result, March 15th or so is really the date that you should care about in your calendar, where if the war has not yet happened by that point, it's going to be looking less attractive to Russia, and thus perhaps less likely to occur. Given that, you might think that mud is a great force for peace. After all, if diplomats can just work to get to that point, the probability of war will drastically drop due to the fact that Russia is going to be hampered in any sort of invasion. Unfortunately, there is a major problem with that line of thinking, and modern crisis bargaining theory can help us uncover it. 
Right now, the distribution between the two countries looks something like this. That accounts for Russia annexing Crimea during the recent revolution, and the separatists in eastern Ukraine that have de facto control over that part of the territory. Now let's think about what might happen in a war between Ukraine and Russia, under the circumstances where the ground is frozen solid, and tanks will not have any problem driving over. The outcome of that war, in expectation, might look something like this. Where Ukraine has de facto control to the northwest, and Russia has de facto control to the southeast. In practice, Russia might actually get a little bit more, or even a lot more. Or maybe a little bit less, or a lot less. But if you take all of those different possibilities and weight them according to their relative probabilities, you might get a weighted average that looks something like this. And if you think that the expected division would be a little bit different, that's fine. We're just using this as an example. That said, war does not come free. If Russia were to invade, it will lose soldiers as well as military materiel. And if you take all of those costs and sum it together, and compare it to the relative value that Russia places on this territory, you might think about its sum costs of war then, reflected by this red line. Everything between the white and the red line represents, in terms of square miles of territory, the value lost as a consequence of having fought a war. Of course, it's a similar story for Ukraine. If Russia invades, Ukraine is also going to pay some costs. Here, we're going to use this yellow line to visualize those costs. All the territory between the yellow and white lines represents the costs associated with war in terms of the value of the land. That's lost soldiers, lost equipment, displaced civilians, and so forth. The key inference to draw here is that any border drawn between the yellow and the red lines is mutually preferable to war. All of those roughly reflect what they expect to get by fighting, but by negotiating an agreement instead, they don't have to pay the costs associated with going through that process. As such, if this is what the balance of power would look like throughout the rest of time, we should expect the states to reach a settlement. In fact, this is why war in international relations is a relatively rare event. The costs of fighting create inefficiencies and incentivize both sides to settle their differences at the bargaining table rather than on the battlefield. But the world is not static like that. Eventually, the frost is going to melt. And when it does, it's going to redistribute the balance of power in a way that would be favorable to Ukraine and unfavorable to Russia. Perhaps the new expectation if they were to fight a war might look something like this, where Ukraine would expect to keep a whole lot more than Russia as compared to the previous case. After factoring in the costs of war, Russia's ultimate outcome might look like this. Reflecting how they are capable of driving tanks through the mud. But the outcome associated with a war under those conditions is less attractive than the alternative. We can do the same thing with Ukraine's costs. And the key inference to draw here is that Ukraine's bottom line has shifted dramatically. Now it needs more to be satisfied. And indeed, the entire range of settlements that are mutually preferable to war is shifted down and to the right, once more in favor of Ukraine and not in favor of Russia. And while it is true that the mud will eventually dry out come summer, that gives Ukraine lots of time to prepare counter-mobilizations against Russia and so the balance of power might not shift all the way back to where it was before.
putting all of the pieces together, we can see how there is a significant bargaining friction between Ukraine and Russia due to that shift in the balance of power. Take a look at where that bargaining range lied pre-shift. Under the circumstances where the ground is frozen and Russia can easily invade with their tanks. The worst possible outcome for Russia in one of those wars, namely where that red line is at, is still better than the best possible bargain it can try to drive out of Ukraine once the power has shifted due to the mud forming. Even if we were to implement a division that looks like this today, Ukraine has something known as a commitment problem, which will sabotage the agreement in the long term. That division is consistent with the balance of power right now. But once the frozen ground melts and the mud starts to form, it is no longer in Ukraine's best interest to maintain that division. It could do better by pushing back against Russia. Realizing that, Russia has an incentive to fight a preventive war in the present, to take advantage of the balance of power as it currently is, and not be pushed back into a position where its balance of power is ultimately not as attractive. And that is one complicated way of saying that mud of all things could cause a war. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Take care.